Okay, hi everyone, and welcome to the building a multi scenario dual DB data abstraction layer with Skylake JDBC. Um, I've put a lot of effort in making the least sexy title that I managed. I see it was worth it, uh, so I appreciate everyone that's here. Um, my name is uh, Sivan, um, and I work for Outbrain in the past year and a half. Um, for anyone that doesn't know Outbrain, uh, content recommendation, um, plat platform um, company. Um, here there are three nice examples of, of new things, uh, newer things that, that we're doing. Um, on the right, um, see that you don't, have an, you don't need an article uh, to have content recommendation. Um, even on, on NBA scoreboard, um, you get some sponsored links. Um, don't know if you've noticed, if you go to our it's opinion page, scroll down and then go up, the, the uh, links at the top beca become out. Uh, and the last thing here is uh, Facebook uh, Messenger, um, the CNN bot that, that was uh, presented um, is basically Outbrain uh, uh, product. <coughs> so Outbrain Engineering, um, the we, we work in Java en environment and moving gradually to Scala. Um, the architecture is microservice. Um, we have the OBIC framework to handle all, all network uh, stuff. And you see, I guess you know most of the things here. <coughs> um, the, in the last uh, five months, I've, I've been part of the Amplify uh, team inside Outbrain, which is um, the part that is facing marketers, um, people that w come to us and want to, uh, their content to be exposed. Um, <coughs> specifically, the project I've been working on is turning this dashboard, which the marketer uh, sees uh, when he wants to, to know how his, his content is doing, uh, with something in this direction. Um, sadly, I couldn't uh, bring uh, uh, the, uh, the dashboard, our new dashboard, since it's not released and the product people um, stood, stood firmly uh, against it. Um, but we're moving towards a, a table-like uh, table dashboard um, where you have entity data and you have performance data of your uh, content. <coughs> so what do you need to, to build uh, such a dashboard? Um, <coughs> you need to access data. Um, and this is where we stood uh, when, th when the project started. Um, we had all data in, in MySQL. Uh, the database is MySQL. The data access layer is Hibernate Java. Um, <coughs> and we have a monolith, um, uh, including uh, all the DAOs, uh, where we transform the data into the model. And at the end, the data transfer objects, um, which is what the endpoints provide. And then um, we started, uh, we needed to make some changes. Um, scale uh, required to, to start working with the Vertica data database. Um, and we needed to do some changes to the, to the model uh, because we want to expose new stuff. Um, and, and at this stage, uh, trying to look at the code uh, and seeing what changes need to be, to, be, to be made, there were mainly two things that, that we had to change. Um, so <coughs> the, uh, the way we needed to add Vertica, um, which meant some, some requirements uh, with the Hibernate, which, has, which are n not that easy to do. Um, we needed to change the XML. Uh, all the transactions between Hibernate and MySQL are defined in, in XMLs. And there, was some, there is some mapping code um, between what the XMLs bring and uh, the Java objects that, that return. So I'll share a, a small uh, 
presentation and a cigarette, uh, for each uh, step in your life, there is usually a yellow um, uh, movie <coughs> character um, uh, image that you can, you can put. And this is what we felt at this stage. Um, it's going to be very complicated. Um, where, where do you start? So, taking a step back, <coughs> the, what's the most reasonable thing to eliminate uh, here? The thing that has the most red stuff around it. Um, so, the first decision was to dump Hibernate and use some Scala library um, to do the mediation between the database and, and, the, and the model. Um, <coughs> and while we read it, um, we decided that all of this uh, monolith that's, that sits, sits there is not relevant anymore. Um, <coughs> and we want to do something, uh, something uh, different um, to, to, to get a better linkage between the endpoint and the data model that it serves. <coughs> OK, so that's a good vision, a good place to start. Um, the next, next question was, which Scala library should we use? Um, so they, there are uh, a handful of, of options here. Um, <coughs> we quite uh, quickly narrowed it to, to these two options. One is Slick, and the other is Scala-like JDBC. Um, <coughs> they, they, they are quite comparable in, in, in uh, more than a few <coughs> aspects. Uh, both have good documentation. Um, there's a low entry barrier for using either of them. Um, you can have uh, different abstraction levels in both cases. Um, testing is, is quite uh, easy to handle, again, in both cases. Um, <coughs> some some uh, aspects uh, are, are not, they're not equal. Um, the community activity in Slick is, is, is higher. Uh, it's a very live project. Um, but on, on a more subjective uh, measure uh, of code readability, when we looked at code, um, uh, at Slick code and Scala -like JDBC code, we liked better what we saw in Scala -like JDBC. Um, <coughs> and um, very important uh, issue is that um, Slick, it's not clear how. Uh, complicated it, it, it is to make Slick work with Vertica. Uh, and and Scalike uh, supports it uh, out of the box. Um, async querying is somewhat supported in both. So we ended up selecting uh, Scalike JDBC. Um, so that's the part where we start uh, watching uh, some code. Um, I'll go through quickly through an, an hello Scalike. Uh, uh, example, we, I'll talk a bit about test code and generators. Uh, we'll see how you, we can handle multiple DBs, and uh, we will finalize with uh, DSL, which makes your life very, very easy. <coughs> so before you even start to write any code and any query, um, you need to establish a connection pool. A connection pool. Um, this is the way to do it. Um, quite, quite simple. Um, you provide the driver class, um, <coughs> you load that driver class to the JVM, and then you build, a, you create a, a connection given the URL, the user, and the password. And implicitly, now you have <coughs> behind the scene all that's needed to, to run the query. <coughs> so, Here's our query. Um, in fact, it's, it's, this is a, it's a method. Um, the domain will, will work with our movies. Um, and we want to have a method which uh, provides a list of movies um, with the rest a restriction uh, to a certain year. <coughs> so the SQL uh, string has some things before and, and after. Let's go through it and see what's happening. So, <coughs> we have uh, the, the year, 
and it's injected into the SQL uh, <coughs> into the SQL statement. What happens behind the scenes here is that there is a prepared statement uh, with a placeholder for year. Um, it's it's common practice. Um, it makes things much safer uh, against SQL injection. Um, <coughs> so we now have uh, given a year. We have a full <coughs> the full uh, query where we select the movie ID, name, and production country from the movies table and uh, limiting it to a uh, specific movie production year. <coughs> Next thing um, at the top is what we get implicitly. Um, we have an auto session uh, <coughs> which was created um, when we created the connection pool. Um, uh, we will see later that you can provide the session, but, uh, but most of the time um, you, you just don't need it. It comes out of the bo box with this line. Next thing is, what do we do with the results that return? Um, <coughs> so we, have, we apply uh, something um <coughs> that we will soon see. And this, the signature of, of this, uh, of this uh, apply method is it takes a wrapped result set, which is defined by Scalic JDBC, and converts it to a movie. So in terms of the, this code, after <coughs> the SQL statement was issued, we're mapping the list of wrapped result sets that came out and turn each one of them into a movie and generate a list. And this is what we get out of, of the method, a, li a list of movies. So every, anyone that knows uh, SQL can quite fast understand um, this code. Um, and to com complete it, here is the, 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 movie, the movie class. It's a case class uh, with ID, name, and production country. Uh, and the apply takes, again, the wrapped result set um, from Scalag JDBC, and we have uh, ac access, uh <coughs> access methods where we give the column name and get uh, the typed, uh, the typed uh, field. Any questions so far? Great. <coughs> so, um, we started writing some code. Um, anyone su can suggest what the next thing to do after we have some queries? <coughs> well, there's a yellow uh, movie character uh, that should suggest that we need to do some testing. Um, <coughs> so we want to have tests like this one. Uh, we want to get movies by year uh, and, and make sure we, we return the correct movies. Um, <coughs> so we want to create movies with different years and then invoke the, the, the me method we just uh, wrote. Uh, notice that this session is uh, specific to, to this test, so we need to, to pass it um, to the get movies by year method. And then since uh, year one uh, uh, appears in, in two different movies, <coughs> we, we expect the result set to be of size, of size two. Um, <coughs> so there is some magic, of course, here, because I never showed you how to create movies. <coughs> and, and this magic is done <coughs> by invoking something like this. Um, you need an SBT uh, plugin. You, you run the Scalike JDBC Gen uh, plugin. Um, you provide it. You, you need to do some uh, some <coughs> setup, uh, but once you have the setup and you and you can connect to the database, you need to give it um, the name of your table and the name of the class that you want to be generated, and you have you get an auto-generated uh, class which has quite a lot. 
Um, so the create we saw earlier is in there. Um, you have uh, find all, um, destroy, um, find by criteria. Um, <coughs> it's very nice and very helpful. Um, and <coughs> but not only for testing. Um, <coughs> I, I if you do work with uh, with uh, with Kalike, um, quite early try to build uh, to build this this type of DAO and read it through. Um, there are many concepts that you can grasp by by looking at, at this code um, and and use later. <coughs> Nice. So the next next thing um, after we we experimented with with my SQL connections was trying to uh, to add Vertica um, to 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 the code and be able to do <coughs> to do uh, to do queries against both my SQL and Vertica in the same code. Um <coughs> so here is the Vertica uh, database initializer, um, quite similar to what we thought we saw earlier. Um, <coughs> with uh, with the main difference being that earlier we had a singleton uh, connection pool dot singleton uh, call, and now we're we're adding. <coughs> we we use the add and give the name we will use for the database. Um, so this symbol, every time we want to do uh, queries against Vertica, we will we will use this uh, sim this symbol. <coughs> Another thing that is uh, different here is that we probably want the settings of the connection pool to be, to be different. Um, Vertica is <coughs> less permissive in, in the number of connections uh, versus MySQL. So you probably, th this is something that uh, is hidden here. You, you can um <coughs> put uh, into the connection pool settings um, the, the size of the connection pools, the max size of the connection pools, and, and uh, some other uh, nice stuff um, that might be changed between different uh, connection pools. Okay, so we defined, uh, we defined the Vertica <coughs> um, connection pool. How, how, do we, how are we going to use it? <coughs> so, First of all, we, we first we earlier saw that there's an auto session um, that we um, provide implicitly every time we want to invoke uh, queries, uh, SQL. <coughs> um, so earlier it was auto session. If you want to use a different uh, 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 connection pool than the default, you need to provide a named auto session and with the symbol um, of that uh, connection pool. <coughs> And uh, one th some of the things um, <coughs> that, that you get in the DAO um, that, that I mentioned earlier is um, a case class representing a table. Um, and in that, uh, for that case, case class, you need to, to add uh, the connection pool name if you want it to uh, refer to a different connection pool than the default. Um, so these are two things that were learned the hard way. Um, I, sa I, I said earlier that the Scalike documentation um, is, is quite good. Um, this, this wasn't explained uh, uh, fully there, uh, so um, these are two things that ca came with some pain uh, uh, to realize. <coughs> okay, so I mentioned that in some cases, um, we have an endpoint that needs to bring data from MySQL, um, diff different uh, data from Vertica, um, and we want to be able to join um, this, this, uh, these two uh, lists. <coughs> so for instance, we have a campaign, uh, a list of campaigns for a certain marketer. Um, so we have the metada metadata of the campaigns on one side, and we have the performance uh, statistics of the campaigns uh, on the other side. This comes from MySQL, this comes from, from Vertica. Uh, we can't have uh, uh, one query to answer both, so we, we issue two different queries <coughs> and we need to do the join. Um, 
I'm not sure how, how I would have done it in, in Java, um, but in Scala, it's <coughs> this, this is that's uh, valid code um, that, that's doing the, the that doing this join. Um, <coughs> so in this example, we have a list of uh, we have a list of movies um, from one database. We have the list of income data from an, another database, and they they share the the movie ID. <coughs> so joining these two lists um, involves building a map for 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 from one of the lists, and then just <coughs> applying um, to a, to a, a new uh, a new data str data structure, um, which is a combination of both. So we have some something very similar uh, in, in our code. Um, if any, if anyone is a bigger uh, Scala expert than me and has an idea how to make this uh, look and work better, uh, please come after <laughs> after the talk and uh, and let me know. So, what have we got <coughs> by now? Um, we have the data abstraction layer, the foundations. We know how to uh, do uh, to work with two databases um, within the same uh, uh, calls. Um, we need to handle the multi-scenario thing. <coughs> so why multi-scenario? Um, so this is a list of the aspects um, that we need to be able to report um, to, to our uh, uh, customers. Um, so the entity types in the system, um, we have the marketer level, each marketer has a list of campaigns and list of budgets and the list of sponsored links <coughs> that, that they wish to, um, to promote. Um, <coughs> we need to be able to do slicing um, to restrict to a, a certain enti by entity, um, work in date ranges. Um <coughs> something that's really interesting for our publisher is to, for our marketer is to know uh, on which publisher they, their content works better, in which geo their content works better. Um, we need more a uh, few formats. Um, we need to <coughs> to have REST. Uh, we need to export CSV. We need to export JSON. We want nice nice charts on our on our site. Um, sorting by all by all fields, uh, filtering on all fields, um, and we need to achieve all that um, with two and sometimes three developers in four or five months. So yellowish uh, movie characters, I guess most of you know. Um, this is what I thought at, at some point. Um, <coughs> and the, the, main, the main obstacle was that if you need, uh, if you need to have a lot of queries, <coughs> going back to, to our example, um, <coughs> doing version, if I want to version this query, um, working with the SQL string is, <coughs> is uh, quite perilous. Um, there's much room for error, and <coughs> what's most uh, frightening is that you, if you do a change, um, it's very hard to know that that the new uh, your uh, query is not right. Um, so we uh, wanted to uh, move <coughs> um, um, to a different format of, of queries. Um, and whoever was in Alon's lecture uh, previously, um, the solution was um, DSL. And Scalike com comes with a query DSL um <coughs> where this uh, uh, this query using the DSL looks like that. Okay, so we don't have any string, uh, any SQL string here. Um, what we do have <coughs> is a programmatic approach. Um, the with SQL says that everything inside the curly braces will be uh, will become a prepared SQL uh, statement. And um, <coughs> and 
let's go in, in, in the details. So we start with a select. Um, in this case, the select is means when you when you leave the select uh, empty, it means select uh, everything um, <coughs> from movie. Uh, movie is the case class that rep represents the movies uh, <coughs> the movies table. Um, again, that's something that can be uh, auto generated. Um, <coughs> so we bringing we want to bring all the fields from uh, movie, um, and the condition is is simply where um, the prod year <coughs> field equals the year variable that we got um, in the in the method uh, declaration. <coughs> um, another small uh, difference here is that we don't invoke movie apply. Uh, we need to uh, write uh, a specific uh, apply. Um, but again, that's something that the <coughs> the auto-generated code gives us. Um, so once it, it took us um, some time to, to get accustomed to working with the DSL, um, but after the ramp up, um, things become uh, much, much easier. Um, <coughs> for instance, um, if I want now to have uh, a, a new method, um, similar to the one uh, we had before, uh, but now uh, I want the movies to be returned um, with the sending uh, name ordering. <coughs> um, if you would have, uh, <coughs> if you uh, would have tried to do it um, in the SQL, it would mean putting the order by uh, uh, inside the, the, the this the SQL uh, string. I'm hoping you 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 got it right, um, <coughs> and here all you have to do is is add uh, a, a function, uh, and the nice thing is that in uh, in compile time um, you got some uh, level of validation. So if I wrote here <coughs> uh, a wrong uh, wrong column name, <coughs> the compiler. Um, would not let me uh, go through. I, I will get a compilation error, uh, and I know that I need to uh, that I ask for the for the wrong uh, thing uh <coughs> much earlier than I would have if if it was an, an SQL uh <coughs> SQL uh, string. <coughs> okay, so let's let's sum up. Um, so the main takeaways from the four months um, that we've been working on this project um, is, first of all, that sometimes the, the best way um, to handle a monolith is to bypass it. Um, you, you, sometimes you can't break it, you just go, must, must go around. Um, <coughs> second thing, which, is, which for me was totally new, that um, you can learn a lot from auto-generated code. Um, something I've never uh, experienced. Um, <coughs> Scala is a good choice when you need to do data manipulation. Um, again, joining uh, the data from, from two different data sources um, could be quite <coughs> painful in Java. Uh, and query D DSL is your friend. Um, uh, don't hesitate to, to put the ramp up time, uh, to, to use the ramp up time, it will make your life much easier later. <coughs> OK, and that's all. <coughs> <coughs> yes, question in the back. Just a sec. Uh, question about Scala, like, does it allow you to tweak the query? So if the statement that gets emitted by the DSL, you know, your DBA doesn't like it, or you need to add a hint, is that something that is uh, possible? Um, you can, I'm not sure I understood the, the question, but um, one thing that is very easy to do is you can um, insert Scala code into, uh, into your SQL. Um, so here I showed you 
predefined uh, uh, functions like order by and where. Um, you can do a map and provide uh, a function in inside it. Um, and it give allows you uh, all the flexibility um, that Scala code has, if that answers the question. <coughs> Not exactly. The question Sorry. is, uh, is there some kind of support to actually state the, the actual statement that will go to the database? Oh, yeah. Like, like the row SQL, <coughs> if sure, you need sure. to. Um, the, you, you, the prepared statement um, can be logged. Um, and you define the, the, the log level, uh, and you can inspect it um, whenever, you, whenever you run the query. Before can, it be <coughs> can it be changed after, after the prepared set statement is defined? No, the prepared statement is defined, as far as I know, uh, in compile time, um, and only the, the placeholders are <coughs> modified in runtime. So if you need uh, different behavior, you need to, to have a different uh, SQL statement. <coughs> yep. OK, so, uh, so how well, I think so, how well is this DSL uh, supporting all the analytics, analytical functions that are provided within the Vertica database? <coughs> Um, <coughs> well, I didn't. Uh, I didn't put it in the uh, in the slides. Um, but um, every SQL uh, syntax that you want to add to the query, um, you you have a way. For instance, we use our, uh, Vertica, the Vertica rollup uh, option, um, where you group by. Uh, certain fields, and in, in addition to the to getting lines for uh, for each uh, occurrence, uh, each occurrence of the field, you get uh, the, the total uh, of of all the fields. So it's just a matter of of creating a small um, SQL syntax uh, function uh, and and adding it to your uh, uh, to your query code. Again, bo in both the SQL string uh, option and, and the DSL. Um, I can show you later uh, how, it's, how we do it in, in our code. Anyone else? Good, so thank you, Sivan. Thanks. Um, <laughs>